Hello friends, let us talk about the challenges faced by technical writers. Since you are viewing this session, I am assuming that you have seen all the earlier sessions which are about the writing process, audience analysis, information collection, brainstorming, concept maps, uh, reviewing guidelines, types of reviews, publishing guidelines and so on. So, while doing his role or her role as a technical writer, there are a number of challenges that a person faces. In this presentation, we are going to talk about that. So, let us start with the presentation. Now, let us look at slide number 2. So, in this presentation, we are going to talk about challenges faced while working alone, challenges faced while working in teams and while working in global teams. Let us go ahead to the next slide. Some of the challenges of working alone. So, let us focus our attention on the slide for some time. While working alone, all the activities including understanding requirement, estimating, planning, writing, delivering and so on are done by the single person. So, there is a lot of stress developed on the individual. No one is there to share the problems, success and even achievements. So, that gives a feeling of loneliness. In fact, there are many lone writers which are members of various mailing lists. There are special mailing lists for lone writers as well. Uh, through this training, I must have mentioned about STC that is Society for Technical Communication. So, STC actually has a SIG or special interest group for lone writers. So, where you can discuss your problems, get solutions from your colleagues or members of the mailing list and so on. Let us focus on the slide again. One of the challenge of working alone is also that there is nobody to do the peer review. As we have seen in the reviewing presentation, peer review is review done by another writer working on the same project. So, your mistakes will now directly be seen by the end user or by your client or internal client. Now, which means that many points or many lapses can actually go unnoticed. Now, this is a potential threat. So, one has to be very careful. If you are working alone, make sure that you are religiously following the complete review checklist. Each and every point, each and every instance of each and every point has been double checked by you. Let us go ahead to the next slide. So, challenges of working alone continued on this slide as well. The quality will depend on the experience and skill of that particular writer. There is no one to guide in critical times. So, there are many problems which could have been avoided, but generally are not avoided because the writer is not able to come out of the thinking process and think of the entire process from a distance or take let us say a bird's eye view or a helicopter view of the process being followed. So, somebody else working on that project or some other project within the team would have probably identified that problem or forewarned that writer that be careful of so and so. So, that may not be possible if you are working alone. There is a feeling of loneliness and I just mentioned to you that there are networks and email lists of lone writers. Uh, there is an advantage, working alone could be a good opportunity to learning everything that is done in your organization when it comes to technical or content writing. Working alone can make you a popular person in your organization. You will be in high demand. So, a lot of teams will come to you for getting different types of documents written. A lot of managers will come to you for getting their deliverables from you and so on. So, you will feel important. A lot of people will be chasing you around and so on. Obviously, you need to deliver good quality. Otherwise, they will be chasing you out of the organization. Let us go ahead to the next slide. Uh, writers working alone sometimes need a driving force to start and continue working. Not everybody is self-motivated. If you cannot motivate yourself, you may run out of steam very soon. There is no less or no knowledge sharing as compared to what happens in a team because you are working alone. So, you learn from your own mistakes. You cannot learn from somebody else's mistakes and that can create problems for you. Let us go ahead. Now, the slide so far may have given you a feeling that working alone is a big problem and working in a team is a big advantage. Well, there are some challenges associated with working in a team as well. So, let us look at those challenges on this slide. I am looking at slide number 6. 
So challenges of working in a team, the team needs a driving force, a manager or a leader, a visionary. The writing style of different members in the team could be different. There could be language variations which can lead to inconsistencies. It takes time to set up the team. It takes time to integrate various team members to work together, gel the team members and make them work together as a group and keep them motivated to keep on doing it for a long time to come. Sometimes it's the building of the team could be easier but then keeping them together can become difficult. Time to wind up the work on a project is also more because there could be many writers who could be knowing a little bit about the project. So let us say three writers working on a project, each one of them will know something about it. So not one person can do the complete knowledge transfer. You will have to get inputs from everybody and in this way knowledge transfer could actually take more time or the number of hours spent could be more. All the team members should be team players if you are working in a team. If one person or one of the members in the team is not really producing output but is depending on somebody else too much, then the entire team's efficiency can go down. As they say, the chain is as strong as the weakest link in the chain. A team is as strong as the weakest person in the team. That person can lead to issues or problems and that person has to be covered up or his or her work has to be covered up by other writers who have more experience. This can become a burden on those writers and their motivational level can actually suffer. They may feel that if somebody is not doing the work and still getting paid, why should I do more for the same or similar amount of salary? So there could be a number of challenges while working in a team as well. Let us go ahead to the next slide. Well, well, now we talk about challenges of working in a global team. Now I assume that many of you will actually get placed in teams which are multi-location operating from a number of offices located in a number of cities or countries and you could even be working with writers let us say in, in the west or in the east, in the middle east and so on. There are many challenges that you may face while working in a global team. So let us take a look at some of them. So we are on slide number 7. First and foremost you may have the language issue. Then there could be an accent issue though both of you are speaking the same language the accent could be different and that can make the language difficult to understand. If you have learnt English as your second language, it is going to be radically different from a person who has learnt it as a first language. So this problem may be faced if you are working with let us say writers in US or writers in the UK. In fact within themselves also there could be issues because of which version of language to be followed and so on. Next point, the discipline difference time difference adapting to the different time zones. The West in general is much more disciplined than the uh, than let us say India or the Westerners are a little bit more disciplined than in Indians. I tend to think that Indians have a cyclic thinking pattern whereas Westerners have a very productive straight thinking pattern. Now if you happen to intersect at the correct point it is fine otherwise it can lead to a lot of confusion. So let us look at some of those points. Understanding the cultural context of a person coming from a different country could be difficult. Communication is set to a test. So you need to communicate to the best of your abilities while working in a global team. Developing rapport and building trust across geographies could be difficult. I am not saying impossible but could be difficult. Especially considering the point that there may not be a lot of person to person meetings. You could be relying only on conference calls, video conferences and things like that or emails and chats and so on. So developing rapport can be a little bit difficult. Let us go to the next slide. Here I am talking about some western myths about Indians. Westerners think and this is based on the interactions that I have had with a lot of writers in the US and fortunately I have been blessed with good friends who are working professionals in the US and I discuss many issues with them very openly. Uh, for your information, I also conducted a web based seminar about working with Indian technical writers and it was attended by more than 300 tech writers in the US. So it happened 
as per Indian time it happened late in the night, something like 1 o'clock in the midnight, but then it was very well appreciated by them. And we have actually got feedback on our presentation which suggests that the assumptions that we have made here are true. So let us focus on the slides. Indians lose track of action items, Indians hate discipline, they do not like to do anything in the systematic manner. Grapevine is the most powerful method of communication when it comes to interacting with Indians. For example, you know one of the western manager told me that in the west they never discuss their salaries very openly. In India, if he is doing a performance appraisal of one writer, the moment that writer gets an raise in the salary and goes out of the appraisal room, within 5 minutes all other writers in the organization would know how much salary rise this person has got. In fact, the next person coming in may come in and insist on the same or higher percentage saying that you have already given it to so and so. So they say if you want to communicate to Indians, send the message as a grapevine and rest assured it will be spread. Many of these things we know are not true, but we need to seriously look at them. So make sure that you are not getting into unauthorized or let me say informal communication practices. Indians have no sense of time. Many times we miss the deliveries, we miss the deadlines and so on and so forth. Now I tend to believe based on my own experience that we try to do, we as an Indians try to do many things at a time as compared to the writers in the West. I am not suggesting that we are doing more work than them, but I am suggesting that we tend to pack more work in our schedule and then sometimes we do not really meet the agenda that we have made for ourselves. That leaves us into trouble and this probably reflects as poor time management seen from somebody else's point of view. Let us go to the next slide. Let us talk about the Indian myths about the Westerners. It is very difficult to point out mistakes to a Westerner because they think that English is their first language and for us it is a second language that means whatever they are saying is necessarily right. If you get into an argument with a Western technical writer when it comes to English or English grammar, almost all the times you have to accept that what the other person wants to say is correct. It is very difficult to argue with them, it is very difficult to point out your point and you know make them accept it. Westerners blame Indians for the loss of their jobs. Now this is true to a great extent and I would not say the blame is true, I would say it is a reality that a lot of people in the West are losing jobs to emerging economies like India be it India, China or other Asian economies because the cost of production is much less over here as compared to the West. So what is happening is a part and parcel of the globalization process. It is an economic reform and it is not the only, I mean it is not only tech writers where it is happening, it is happening across number of industries, number of verticals and so on. But yes, this sentiment is definitely there. They value, that is the Westerners value the system more than personal judgment. Many times Indians tend to think and take an action or a decision based on their thinking at that particular point of time. Sometimes this means that they have to overlook some of the decision making guidelines given by the organization. They say, oh, I know the system is like this, but in this case I think we should go on and choose option B. So we tend to violate systems, that is what the Westerners think and we think that the Westerners try to confine themselves to systems so much that we tend to or, or they tend to overlook what is very obvious. They value discipline much more than individuals, they do not minding sacrificing individuals for the sake of disciplines. Once again I feel this is true and to some extent this is true about the entire Indian society. Our definition of discipline or implementation of discipline in our social life is not as strict as the West. You can see that in our traffic, you can see that in our political scenario, you can see that in our project management and so on. I am sure you must have, I mean you will come up with your own list of experiences to justify these topics, justify these points. The Westerners have an easy going nature, then why do they insist on the time so much? Now I like to plan and I like to meet my deadlines as per plan. 
However, the Westerners plan in such a way that the deadlines will be met almost automatically. The time that they allocate to themselves, the thinking process that goes into it, the elaborate planning that goes into it and the meticulous follow up that goes into it actually makes sure that reaching the deadline or completing the work within the deadline is almost automatic. Now we tend to work, we as an in Indian tech writers tend to work on a priority basis or I would even go and say interrupt basis. So if somebody says this is important, I leave aside what I am doing and I get into that. Instead of telling that person that, you know, I am working on so and so thing right now, why do not I complete this and take a look at your project on Monday? It may not be acceptable in our organization. To some extent, the limitations that we have mentioned here could be limitations or not, may not exactly be termed as limitations, but definitely the observations about Indian businesses or Indian societies as opposed to Western businesses and Western society. So some amount of disagreement is going to be there. If there is enough motivation on both the sides to accept the facts and move on, I am sure you will make a successful team. Let us go to the next slide. Working global teams and succeeding in a global team is going to be very important to build a career of tomorrow or a successful career of tomorrow. You simply cannot give reasons for your or somebody else's behavior and get away with that. You would want to work in a team and succeed in a team. How can you do that? It definitely cannot be done on one side, but if the team has the right understanding, then the team can definitely succeed and can succeed for a much longer period of time. So let us look at the next slide. So global team succeeds when when it meets commitment, so let us focus on the slide and we have got slide number 10 here. So when it meets commitment, commitment in terms of planning and execution, managing changes, project execution and so on, it demonstrates transparency, openness, honesty, information sharing, it demonstrates consistent behavior which is reliable, dependable, predictable and process oriented. Let us go to the next slide keys to success while working in a global team. So we are looking at slide number 11. So keys to success, developing reliable communication, working through the languages, cultures, distance, time zones and so on, working towards the same goal irrespective of this change in language and culture, building relationship, developing a common framework of understanding for everybody to come together. Finally, building trust within the team members as individuals. They should be able to gel together, they should trust each other for their capabilities and each of the team member should add value to the team. When this happens, a team anywhere, whether it is local or global, will be successful. Thank you.